Okay, so this is been what's been going on. Um, I've got this cleared down to the uh, firewall. The uh, frame rails are cut off right there at the uh, level with this this outcropping here. This is where it was uh, spot welded on in this area over here, and then I just cut this area. What I'm going to do is I'll I'll drill this out and rosette some plating on the inside here so that I can slide the um, donor car front clip on here and then of course then I'll respot all this in and sp spot this in also I didn't cut this inner panel out because it's mended in beyond in the firewall so I just also will splice this piece in here but I drilled out the spot welds on the outside so these should guide in pretty well and show me where this needs to locate same thing on this side over here you can see where I just did the inner panel I just cut it you can see the sealer and so forth in here and of course that it goes inboard and a little deeper than I want to get involved I have to get all these layers off in order to get to that so this is a good stop point everything seems to be pretty straight and uh, symmetrical from this point and um, so over to here which a lot of people only uh, realize that these Dodge Magnums were the first plat the first of this platform to be produced and uh, in 2005 and that everything here pretty much matches what's on the uh, Challenger over there this is the frame rail off of the Challenger as you can see it's bent up but you can also see the mounting points that match up over here and the profile and everything is the same and of course where it spot welds up into here is the same exact piece little indentions and all the different key, key parts over here but uh, it's got a really good engine cradle it's got a really good radiator core support and um, good shock towers everything's nice and straight so and everything as far as the suspension bolts ups are all the same so I'll be taking this out you know along here get all these spot welds out but on the inside I'll be doing the same thing you can see this area here I'll be cutting this about two inches out from the firewall and that way it'll mend in pretty good at the same location points over there so as you can see, it's uh, only skin deep, the differences in these two cars, by and large. Of course, this is a 120-inch wheelbase car. This is 116, and where they actually made the change in this platform when they came out with the Challenger from the Dodge Charger to 300 and the Magnum is the distance between this rail and this riser here where the uh, the gas tank and the rear seat and everything is so this is just moved ahead four inches shortening the platform and you notice if you look in the back of these challengers if you've got the front seating pretty comfortable there's really almost like three inches of leg room in the back so I think these rear seats are just there for the insurance purposes of making it a four-seater as opposed to a two-seater car but really unless you've got two inch legs it's a pretty tight fit on the back seat but everything else from there forward is pretty much the same so this is the 2.7 liter v6 which say everybody says it's a pretty horrible engine it's got a bad history it's got a history of the chiming chains getting loose and then they they clatter up here and break the valve covers and then they also have an issue with the internal um, you know water pump and a seal that allows water to mix in with the oil well this has got two hundred and forty thousand miles on this engine and the oil was pretty nice and from all indications the reason it it's cooked is because I pulled the radiator out and while it seems to look very nice I opened the petcock and uh, no fluid came out of it 
Um, but then I took the lower radiator hose off, and of course there was a flood, so that's telling me that it's probably jammed up pretty good in the bottom of this thing. And um, also, the other indicator is that the reservoir for the antifreeze was filled all the way up to the cap when I uncapped it, which tells me that the owner, this is the probably, this is the normal fill line right in here, you can see, that the owner previously was probably having overheating problems and was adding fluid like a crazy person and then uh, not attending to the overheating issue, which finally ended up killing the motor. So for all the 2.7 haters out there, this one lasted 240,000 miles, and that's a pretty good success story for this this little motor anyway. Transmission's pretty good. I don't know if it's of any value. It's one of the, four, I believe it's a four-speed um, automatic. I don't know if it has an overdrive component or not, but... Um, yeah, it was easier to take the Hemi out than, than this, believe it or not, because of um, the one particular wire situation, and that's the, the starter. I mean, it's buried in there. You know, with the engine in the in the car, I don't know how the heck you're supposed to get to that starter on the front side here. I mean, it's just completely inaccessible from that side, and it's underneath the um, exhaust manifolds. And just taking the wires off of this thing, I had it have everything off the engine uh, you know the hoses the air conditioning well actually the power steering pump and so forth just to get a socket in there just to take take the wires off the starter let alone if I had to try and see how I was going to get that out if I was doing a repair on one of these things I don't know that's a little nightmarish to me but anyway well that's all for now